Hey everyone, good afternoon. I'm just gonna go ahead and give um, some more of the attendees a couple minutes to join in before we get started, but welcome to those who are here now. And uh, we'll get started here in just a minute or two. All right, looks like we've got um, everyone on that's gonna be joining us today and we might have some people come on a little bit later, but no worries, we're gonna be recording this webinar so everyone can watch it later on, even though we won't be live, but I'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to the April ACES webinar, part of our monthly webinar series. Thank you so much everyone who's on for your support and for being present for this webinar this month with Climate Ride. Before I introduce our topic and our speakers for this month, I'd like to update everyone on some program updates um, from ACES. This is Carly Cipolla. I am the Director of Operations for the American Solar Energy Society, and I'm working to plan our Solar 2020 uh, conference. Um, so we were gonna be in DC in June, but we're now converting to be um, completely virtual uh, to, you know, during the whole pandemic. Want to make sure everyone's safe and on top of that, you know, lessening everyone's carbon footprint in the process, which can't hurt. So we will be now on a fully interactive virtual platform. We'll have an animated lobby that you can enter into as an attendee and a participant of the conference that will feature a fully interactive networking lounge, exhibitor hall, and an auditorium that will house all of our sessions. And these will be happening on June 24th and 25th. Uh, they will also all be recorded. So if you do um, register for the conference and you're unable to attend live, no worries. You will have uh, recorded access to everything after the conference is over. We'll also have two NAPSEP courses and a net zero energy workshop that will be on our GoToWebinar platform on Friday, June 26th that are available through separate purchases. As a whole, the conference is only 274 bucks with the uh, early bird discount that's available up through May 29th. Also, all of our ACES members receive additional discounts anywhere between 15 to 70% off. So be sure to join ACES to get the best rate to the conference, aces.org slash join, and learn more about the conference at aces.org slash conference. Our sign up form is also available right now for the National Solar Tour. So feel free to go ahead and check out nationalsolartour.org and sign up to host a local solar tour or open house October 3rd and 4th of 2020. Uh, again, since uh, we've got COVID-19 going on, we are prepared to switch to a fully virtual platform for the tour as well this year. Um, so sign up if you're interested. All right, and now we have um, our next webinar planned right now for May 27th, where we'll have our conference chair, Scott Sklar, talk about maximizing our resources to reach 100% renewable energy. And uh, that will be at noon Mountain Time, May 27th. Again, all of our ACES members have free access to our webinar series, so be sure to join aces.org slash join. And now I'm going to go ahead and introduce our April webinar that we have today on fundraising on fundraising with Climate Ride. We have with us today uh, Mackenzie Cole and Blake Holiday, who will cover exactly what Climate Ride is, their independent challenge program, and then some general fundraising tips for you guys today. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mackenzie and Blake. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Blake Holloway. I'm the National Events Director for Find a Ride. And I'd just like to, first of all, thank Carly um, for organizing this. Um, everything's going smoothly so far with all of the crazy technology. Um, but I also want to thank all of you as uh, Solar Energy, American Solar Energy Society members and guests, um, because the work you guys are doing there um, is just great. The National Solar Tour is really amazing. I've been a fan for a while. And also going virtual at the conference, what an amazing thing to do. So it must be tough, but challenging and uh, and great that you're still moving forward to get all that information out and still have a conference. Um, so we are at Climate Ride, and uh, we're here today to talk about uh, in the independent challenge program, as well as just our general programs. Uh, but uh, we are a nonprofit uh, that runs um, biking, hiking, and um, and running trips uh, all over the world, basically. Uh, we were founded in 2008. Uh, we support as a means to fundraise. Um, so just like AIDS Ride or MF, like MS, or any of the five Ks that raise money. Um, back in 2008, our two founders, Kaylee Quinn and Jolene Carter, uh, had taken a trip to China and saw a lot of pollution, a lot of um, unsustainability, and so decided, hey, how could we make a difference? So they thought, well, we could organize a, a charitable bike ride and have people raise money for the environment. But they quickly found out that there was anybody raising money um, for things like sustainability, renewable energy, um, conservation, uh, the climate uh, crisis. Uh, so uh, they thought, let's run a bike ride. So they, they called me up. Uh, it was all friend of theirs from our bike leading days, our bike tour leading days. And uh, we put together uh, the first ever climate ride from New York to DC, and that was in 2008 in September. And we got about 115 people or so to come join us and raise a bunch of money. Uh, there's only about 3% of giving in the US that actually goes to these causes uh, related to sustainability, renewable energy, um, active transportation, those kinds of things. And that 3% includes animal welfare. So that's like ASPCA, um, all the humane societies, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can imagine that, you know, they raise millions and millions and millions of dollars for a lot of health related and dis disease related causes, which are super important, obviously. Um, but we felt like the health of the planet was also something that we wanted to support. So uh, at the end of the ride, uh, it was challenging and crazy. And uh, and we, we made it all the way to DC after five days and there wasn't a dry eye right in front of the Capitol. Uh, really everybody, it was very moving. Um, to ride that far, 300 miles in uh, five days to get there. Um, so when we said, what are we going to do next? You know, like, let's keep this going. So since then, we've organized about 54 major events um, in the last 12 years. Um, and we've donated out about a uh, little over $6 million to about 125 different organizations that are working on all of these issues because there isn't just one thing that's that we can just say, okay, let's put all our money toward that. Sustainability is just as important as renewable energy and they're connected. And active transportation is just as important as all the other things too. So there's a lot of pieces of this puzzle, a lot of NGOs and nonprofits and government organizations uh, and, and uh, in the private sector too, working on these issues. Um, but uh, we donate uh, our grants to uh, the nonprofits um, and uh, help support their missions because we know how to organize an awesome bike ride or an awesome hike. Um, but we don't know how to build solar panels or put them in low-income uh, communities, that kind of stuff. There are experts that do that, so that's why we rely on them. So you can see uh, that we just have a grant slide up. Um, it's broken up by a bunch of different uh, categories and, and industries. Uh, yeah, you can see here um, active transportation is uh, one of our smaller ones, but very important. People like that uh, can encourage walking and stuff in cities. Renewable energy is about five or six percent, and that's uh, people uh, that are working on uh, improving the grid and adding solar and geothermal and all kinds of other renewable sources. Uh, we've got bike coalitions as a big part of it. That's part of our active transportation uh, group that we broke it out so you can see that a lot of people from bike coalitions also um, enjoy our activities and stuff. Climate advocacy, and our biggest one really is sustainability and conservation. So we're really mostly about sustainability and active transportation. Uh, so the way it works is people normally sign up for an event that we've scheduled. So like we had to cancel this year's climate ride in May, um, but we had a great community, we have a great community of people that ride down the North Coast or the Central Coast in California every year. About 100, 120 people or so do that in-person event. Um, it's a really fun way to bring people together and keep them inspired. Really, our mission is to uh, create a community of, of active philanthropists who come together and are inspired and bring that inspiration back to their communities. So that's kind of what we do.
So we also realized, we heard a lot of people say, gosh, I can't make it to that event this year. And we usually have about 11 or 12 different events, uh, usually a couple uh, abroad and mostly in the U.S. We try to keep them regional so people don't have to travel far to get there. Uh, but uh, we have one in Maine, we've got one in California, we have had one in Colorado, uh, the Pacific Northwest, the Southwest, um, and in the Midwest too. So a bunch of ones uh, in Michigan uh, and in that region. So we realized that along the way that a lot of people can't actually get to these events or maybe it's a wedding that weekend or that kind of thing. So we thought, well, why don't we create a way to make it available to, uh, to anybody at any time? And so it turns out there's a great way to do that, and that's virtually. So uh, our Independent Challenge program was was born. You can kind of see on here um, this little slide of our events. We've got Climber Ride. Um, we decided to do a weekend event, which was is our Green Fondale, uh, which we are doing near the California, near San Francisco, California each year. We're going to expand it to the East Coast, we hope, in 2021. But it's more like a weekend event with a lower fundraising minimum, and it's, um, it's a bike, bike party, basically. So we have like bikers and hikers come, and then they spend the weekend in camp, and it's a really fun event. Uh, Climate Run, we've got a run in Oregon, too, that we run. And recently, because of our canceled events in May, this last one here, the Climate Rise, um, and that's a virtual event, so we decided to go uh, virtual and have people fundraise at home. And it was kind of like a giant independent challenge, actually. We had about 310 people sign up to um, do all kinds of things at home. Everything from baking to uh, playing music uh, to walking to reading, uh, whatever people felt like um, that they could do and do safely. So some people rode their bike trainers inside their house, some people rode their bikes outside their house. But that about alone raised about $60,000 in just one day, uh, which was kind of shocking to us. But we know that people love to support this issue. So, um, and so it really inspired a lot of people, especially because everyone's been locked down and, and in kind of like a funk about it, right? So this kind of got them a little bit happier uh, thinking it for the future. Um, so that was our Climate Rise event. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the Independent Child Program is run by our very own Mackenzie Cole out of Missoula, Montana, and he is right here to tell you a little bit more about what that's all about and how you can do it. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, thanks, Carly and Aces, for hosting us. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to walk through what our Independent Challenge Program is. Uh, it's an opportunity to design your own event to be a fundraiser for uh, our great beneficiaries like Aces. Um, we do really awesome big events like Blake was just talking about, where hundreds of people come together to ride bikes, um, raise money for the environment. But like Blake said, sometimes folks can't make a ride or they want to do a challenge that we don't offer. So we created this program in order to offer folks the ability to fundraise on their own um, and support with a big event or personal challenge or even, you know, birthday, wedding, any sort of thing that can create some something to talk about that pushes you into doing something you haven't tried before or taking on something you've always wanted to do, that can be an opportunity to fundraise for an organization that you love. And the program's done pretty great so far. Um, since 2014, it's raised over $200,000 for nonprofit causes. Um, and each year it pulls together between 30 and up to $60,000. And it can be just a really awesome way to add on to something that you're already doing. So folks sometimes, um, it, you know, maybe you're doing a once in a lifetime trip to the Alps for your 50th birthday, right? And you want to ride through the Alps. You can tag on uh, a climate rise or climate ride independent challenge and um, shoot to raise $5,000 for a great beneficiary like ACEs. And I'm just going to walk you through what that process kind of looks like today. And then um, we'll do some questions at the very end, but feel free to start typing them in if you have any, and I'll do my best to incorporate them into my chat. So it's a pretty simple process. Uh, first thing is just come up with what your challenge is. And these can really be anything. A lot of the examples I'll have today focus on bikes. We've been very bike focused, but people have done hikes. Um, as I said before, people have used their weddings as a way to also build in some fundraising because they really cared about the organizations and wanted to incorporate them into that commitment. Um, so really the sky's the limit. And anything that you can do that um, you love to do or that you've never done before can become your challenge. So I think it's a good idea just try and be creative. Um, 
the more interesting it is, the uh, more likely it is that people will talk about it and that'll ease your fundraising. Um, and then once you have an idea for a challenge, you can just register at climateride.org. I'll walk you through that process. It's really simple. Um, the next step is to develop your ask. We'll get into that a little bit more later. And then um, I like to think of like making sure you have some time to build up to your challenge. So I, I couch that in training, but that if you're doing a challenge that's say you decide you want to bake pies for all your neighbors, that can be a great independent challenge, especially during this time where you know people are isolated. So long as you're doing it safely, you know, dropping those pies on the corner, <laughs> making sure to be really safe about it. Um, anything that you take on, it's just a good idea to build up some lead time so that you can be talking about it. And that helps, uh, it should help you to fundraise. And then you just got to do it, get out there. Um, and then lastly, it's just important to remember to follow up. And these are good tips for any sort of fundraising that you do. Uh, but when you sign up for uh, independent challenge with us, we're there every step of the way. So if you run into a problem, we have ideas for you. We have, we can walk you through it. So let's think about creating your challenge. It's always a great idea that it's something personal to you. You know, if you've never ridden a bike before, don't try and ride a hundred miles um, in a month, right? Take on challenges that uh, are unique to you, something that you've always wanted to do, uh, but maybe haven't pushed yourself for. So it's an opportunity. If you're excited about it, if it's something that you love, you're going to talk about it. Whether you know you're just bumping into a friend, um, chatting with a relative who you haven't talked to in a while, it, it gives you an opportunity to mention the organization that you're fundraising for, why they're important, and then also give people the opportunity to join you in supporting them. Um, so also make it doable. Make sure it's something you can take on. Go big, but go big in a way that you're going to feel successful about. So, you know, if you, um, for some people that might mean like 20 mile ride uh, for a week, right? You're just going to do a 20 mile ride every week. Or it might mean um, hiking your first 14er, right? Anything that you feel like you you can build up to doing, you can train for, and you can actually accomplish and then talk about is going to make a great independent challenge. And then you can, it's always a great idea to try and make it memorable. So I'll give you some examples of how people have done that with past independent challenges, but memorable can be anything. It could be wearing a funny suit, right? It could also just be taking the time to really think about why you're doing it and having an impassioned speech. So for everybody, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the more unique you can make whatever your challenge is, the more likely that people are gonna remember it, they're gonna pay attention to it, and they're gonna keep checking in, um, which gives you opportunities to do a little bit more fundraising. All right, so let's talk about how you sign up. It's really simple. All you have to do is go to climateride.org slash independent. And that'll bring you to a registration page. It'll give you all the extra information you need. Um, but when you actually go to register, all you need is your name and email address. It's a really simple process to register. There is a registration fee for the Indie Challenge. It's $25. Uh, but because you're here uh, today, you get 25% off if you use the code ACES for registering. And hopefully that $25 isn't a barrier to your fundraising for um, the beneficiaries that need you. And then the next step for regis registering, and this is an optional step that you can finish up at any time, but I always like uh, to suggest people just do it as part of their registration process so it gets done, is just go in, add a photo of yourself, talk a little bit about what you're going to do, that creative idea that you already came up with, and why you're doing it. Um, that can be really short and sweet, and that brings me to the next thing, which is you want to just create an ask that you can share on that page and share with people. This is, you can think of it like a, an elevator pitch, right? But you can make it as broad or as short as you want, but you want to be able to convey to people why you're doing what you're doing quickly. So two to three sentences um, that really connect it to the beneficial organizations that you're supporting and why you're doing it and what you're doing. So it can be as simple as I'm riding 200 miles next month for the American Solar Energy Society because I believe a 100% renewable energy future is our best bet for combating climate change. And you just wanna like have those sentences written out. You wanna workshop them a little bit by talking to friends and family. So you just feel really comfortable in it and what, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, your ask is really important because you're gonna be returning to that when you talk about your challenge. And the more you're in the habit of that, the more straightforward it is in your head, the easier it's gonna be. Because when you say, oh, I'm doing this charity ride for, uh, doing 200 miles next month, can you support me? It helps to just say who you're supporting, why you're supporting them, 
And the more you rehearse those things, the more likely they're just going to come up in casual conversation as you're talking about that exciting event that you're doing. Um, a couple other things to think about when you're thinking about just asking for money for organizations. It's often helpful if you can afford to. And we, we all know right now it's hard times for a lot of folks. Um, and this crisis has really affected people financially. Um, but there are still people looking for opportunities to help. And helping can be a really great way for folks to feel better during trying time and also feel like they're reaching out, connecting with other people. And it can also be helpful if you can afford to, to just make a donation to kind of put your money where your mouth is. Um, and that gives you an opportunity when you ask people to say, hey, can you match my $50? Um, these independent challenges are great because where you might have only given $50 or $200 in the past, you now have an opportunity to reach out to people about this organization that you believe in and help them also have the opportunity to support them. So you're, you're moving things up a notch and not only relying on your own financial uh, means, but really reaching out to the, the network of people that you know and getting them to help you help uh, organizations like ACES so that they can continue on too. So putting, putting in a donation, asking people to match you in that donation, um, is an awesome way to ask, you know, of course, right now you always want to be saying if you can, because there are a lot of folks who can no longer make those donations, but there, you'll be surprised by the number of people who still can. And then I think the last thing with your ask that's really important to remember is to always keep asking. Um, I don't know about you, but there's been plenty of times in my life where I've been asked to do something, I really wanted to do it. And then two days later, I remembered, oh, dang, I missed that awesome concert that my friend was doing, or I forgot to kick $20 into this great fundraiser because I was in the middle of work and I happened to see it and they texted me then, or you know, I was out on a bike ride and I bumped into somebody I forgot later. So the more you can just keep reminding people that they have this opportunity to join you in supporting a good cause, um, the more likely they're gonna be to actually do that. Um, so this brings me to training. Uh, and like I said earlier, when I say training, I mean, you know, we've built this structure around bike rides and it is important if you're going to be doing, you know, 300 miles in five days that you train up to it. But it's also a good structure for just fundraising generally that you have a regimen of uh, building up to the big event that you're going to be doing that awesome, cool, creative thing that you've planned. And if you break that down into bits, like, uh, for example, I'm learning a piano piece. so. This week I you know, started practicing it for three minutes and here, listen to me, screw up, you know, and you share that on Facebook as an update to your friends and family. It, it goes back to giving them more opportunities to remember that you're doing something important and that they have an opportunity to join you in doing it. Um, so I always suggest that you give yourself at least a few weeks on any fundraiser that you do and that you plan those weeks to be updating folks. So whether it's you know, you're going to start running three miles uh, every other day and then the next week, hopefully five to six, and then do a big day and take a few days off. Those are all also opportunities to just update the folks that you've reached out to already, um, ask them to join you in your giving of in your support of this organization. And then also it, it hopefully um, gets them talking more about what you're up to. So. The last thing to remember is that you just got to get to it sometimes. This is my favorite Abraham Lincoln quote. Um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with him as a pro snowboarder, but in addition to being a president, he was a great snowboarder as well. No, but I, I put that in there. Hopefully it gave you a chuckle. Um, just to remind you that you can have fun with these things. Um, when you get out there and you actually do the event, you know, wear a funny hat, put on a funny costume. Um, share a little bit of joy along with some fundraising and you'll be surprised how often folks uh, tune into it more because they're having a good time with you. And, you know, hopefully you can find something that you care about, that you're passionate about, that you can also have fun with uh, to reach out to people. And that's also, I think, a good gift in this time. Uh, please don't quote me. Abraham Lincoln probably never said those exact words that way, but maybe he was definitely not a pro snowboarder. Um, okay. And then the final step to a successful indie challenge, independent challenge, is just following up with your results. Um, Oftentimes people will get additional donations on follow-ups, but it's also just a good idea. You know, these people joined you in your commitment to something you care about. They donated, um, they paid attention. So take the time to say thank you um, because it's more likely that they'll continue doing that in the future if you do. It's also a great opportunity to just restate this thing that you care about, right? You believe um, that we need renewable energy. 
this is an opportunity to spread that message in a positive way and give people a chance to learn about it and also stand up for it. Um, and it's also a great time to offer other actions to take. So maybe you suggest that people look into how much solar is actually being uh, incorporated into their you know, power networks or uh, different options for them to go uh, to, towards solar usage. Um, and it's just also important to remember that if you do sign up for an independent challenge with us, you can keep fundraising after your event. Um, we do see most fundraising coming in on the lead up to the event and right after the event, but um, our official deadline is December 1st. That's when we call it quits. That's when we determine our final fundraisers um, prizes, and that's when we start sending out grants. So you do have some time unless your event ends on November 30th, in which case get that follow-up email out quick. Um, and I think it's important to say, of course, we want you doing whatever you're passionate about for these events, but right now we're in an epidemic and you definitely need to be paying attention to, you know, doing good and not spreading disease and not also getting yourself sick. So, um, you know, I, I prefer to go to the WHO for my information, but also definitely follow local recommendations. A lot of places you can still ride your bike solo and it's safe. If uh, you feel comfortable doing that, you follow those recommendations. Some places you can't. So please, um, if you do take on any challenge, think about a bike trainer challenge, do it safely. And just uh, one more incentive for fundraising with Climate Ride, you get some pretty cool gear. So we're pretty proud of our gear. We work hard on coming up with stuff that people can actually use and love. And for some people, that's a great you know, incentive to get going with it. It's also just an opportunity to for us to say thank you for taking on these challenges and doing your best to support organizations that need it right now. Um, but you can see all of the uh, incentives and prizes that you can win for fundraising and taking on big challenges uh, at our prizes. Um, so I thought I'd just give a couple quick stories of our past independent challenge riders because um, there's an incredible number of them and they're pretty awesome people. And I think it's also just cool to hear like what they built up to doing um, as they went along. So I'm going to do these pretty quickly, but just so everybody can kind of hear. So I'm going to start off with Tim Oi. Um, Tim biked from San Francisco to Boston last year. He's an incredible guy. Uh, he had done one cross country bike ride before that, but he decided that this was the year where he was going to go big, raise a bunch of money for the nonprofits that he cared about, and then also really try and um, just let people know that zero waste, which is a passion of his, is something that they can do. He's been zero waste for years. His family, it's ridiculous. Like uh, a family of, I think, four, they produce about a gallon of waste a month or less, if I remember right. So he's been really committed to this. And he also bikes everywhere. Um, he's a really committed guy. And he went big and he biked all the way from San Francisco to Boston. And he made the time to stop along the way and give talks about zero waste, about uh, the need to pay attention to climate change. And he gave over. I think he gave over 300 talks by the end where he was in libraries, he was stopping at different places along the way. So you can take these independent challenges, you can you know, devote several months of your life and you can go big and try and raise a bunch of money like Tim, but you can also just decide to give it three or four days or even just a day of your life. Um, Sarah Tolshin uh, had ridden with us once before and decided to do an indie challenge because uh, what the ride she wanted to do, our California ride, just conflicted with the graduation, her child's high school graduation last year. And so she said, I'm still gonna raise money. I'm still gonna commit to these groups. And she decided to do a 300 mile ride, ended up raising over $2,000. She'd never done a solo ride like that before. It was a big challenge. And I mean, that's still pretty big. We've also had people do 50 mile ride day rides, right? And raise $1,000 for a given nonprofit. Um, and then the last person that I wanted to highlight, uh, he started riding with us years and years ago, did a couple of our bigger group events, and then um, had some conflicts, decided to do the independent challenge. He's a really strong rider, so he takes on these epic, epic rides where he'll do 200 miles in a day for four days straight or something like that, something that would be challenging even for, um, you know, a very, like, active cyclist. And he started fundraising at the two, $3,000 level, and now he has built up through the course of doing several independent challenge rides, just a network and an ask and an ability to fundraise where he's um, raised over $10,000 last year. And 
total, his overall impact, um, you know, through this, his using his kind of superpower of cycling has built him up to raising more than almost 40 grand uh, for uh, the Sierra Club of, yeah, for the Sierra Club. So he's really worked hard to um, use independent challenge, use sport as a way to fundraise, and it's paid off big time. Um, I talked to Dennis about just kind of if he had been doing much fundraising before he worked with us. And he said he'd only ever donated to organizations at the one to $200 level. So if that's something that you've done and you really do want to increase your impact, you know, you can go as far as you want to um, and it and it can pay off loads for these organizations that uh, especially right now need us. Um, and then I thought I'd just talk really quickly about a couple of our current uh, indie riders before we open it up for any questions. So. I, I just want to let people know what people have been doing um, and just kind of how people have shifted based on uh, COVID-19. Sorry, I get so fidgety in this chair. It's very uncomfortable. I got to get a better, my office chair is awesome. Maybe I'll go still that, bring it back here. Um, so William Flagg is, he, I wanted to highlight him because he met Tim. You all remember Tim from the last slide was the person who biked all the way from San Francisco to Boston. and. Uh, Bill was so inspired by Tim that he decided to take on an indie challenge this year. He was going to start actually last week, but he's pushed that back, obviously. He's hoping to still go in the fall, um, cross country if everything is it's safe to do. Um, but he decided that he was going to ride across country and raise money for Bikes Not Bombs. So the other cool thing about taking on a challenge like this, you know, doing some fundraising for something that you love is that you inspire others to also do that. And um, so Tim's kind of legacy of his ride is that he's inspired another person to try and raise $10,000 for the organizations that he believes in. So it spreads. Um, I also wanted to talk about Team Road Life. They're a group of three pretty awesome women, Alicia, Beth, and Kathleen, who did a ride with us um, three years ago together and then decided to do a big group uh, fundraiser through the Independent Challenge Program. They put on a ride, uh, Gravel Grinder, um, three years ago for the first time, right before their big ride with us as a way to help fundraise for it. They've got two, 200 people to come out and ride with them on gravel roads, you know, spread and like there were talks they gave, they got everybody super impassioned about um, using sport as a way to educate on climate change. And then this year, they did it again last year, and then they decided to do a virtual one this year. So they made successfully made a pivot where they you know, mapped out a bunch of routes for people to do independently, um, not in big groups. And several people went out and wrote those and they continued fundraising. So um, they also made that pivot and continued using that platform. And they've reached over 600 people at this point to, uh, with, you know, message of climate change is something we need to work on and um, let's get out there and, and raise this issue. So it's pretty awesome. And then the last group I wanted to highlight is Team Omen. Um, they're another group who is doing a cross country ride this year, so another big goal, but I thought it was pretty fun. Um, they just self describe as geezers trying to make a difference. So they're, they just kind of saw that um, they're, they felt like a lot of um, climate change rested on their shoulders and their generation's shoulders, and they wanted to take up that challenge and do something about it. So their goal is to raise $30,000 this year. Um, they had to push back, of course, to the fall, but hopefully they'll get to it and go across country. So just some pretty awesome people doing some pretty amazing stuff. And again, I've highlighted some pretty big fundraisers here just because their stories, you know, grab attention. But there's been amazing different big and small uh, independent challenges along the way. Um, okay, so I thought I would just transition really quickly into a couple of notes on just how to fundraise um, and Blake if you have any updates uh, you can chime in and fill in my holes at the end because Blake's been at this much longer than me. I Mackenzie I have um, a quick question that came from Elaine Hebert and she was wondering if you could talk a little bit about doing team independent events. Absolutely yeah so uh, you know we have a variety of options the idea with the independent challenge is that folks have the opportunity to plan something that they believe in and we just try and help them fundraise through it. So uh, we have had people do group, group rides like 
the gravel grinders, and then also just form teams to go together. Um, each one of those is different and customizable. So we worked with those folks to help them do the thing that they wanted to do. Um, if somebody's thinking about doing a big group team ride, uh, we definitely have some stipulations about safety that we just wanna make sure are happening and we walk you through those um, if you sign up for that. Um, or you can sign up with like three of your good friends, kind of like the Omen Riders are doing. And then everybody just registers and goes together. Um, hopefully that addresses some of those questions, but yeah, you can sign up as a team, you can do it as a single person. And we also have um, some protocols in place where if you wanna do a bigger event, um, it's definitely a little bit more work. We want to have meetings with folks ahead of time because those are higher liability. There's a lot more to think about, but um, we have done that in the past for specific organizations. So hopefully that um, answered your question, Lane. But if you have any questions, you can always follow up with me. My email is going to be here at the end, but it's mckenzie at climberide.org. So I'd be happy to answer anything I didn't get to there. Um, OK, let's talk fundraising. So. Um, for a lot of folks, fundraising can be intimidating, especially right now uh, with the economy kind of shortfalling and everyone being an epidemic. But we just had a pretty incredible um, fundraiser with Rise and the Gravel Grinders just had um, a virtual event that also did some pretty good fundraising. And it's still doable. Um, and there, like I said earlier, there's people still out there looking for uh, the opportunity to help. And I think that one of the biggest obstacles people bring up with me again and again when they're having trouble with fundraising is just that they feel like they're asking for money from people for themselves and there's a lot of difficulty there and i think uh it's one thing that i learned through this to take you know working with climate ride talking to a lot of different successful fundraisers is that there's a lot of people out there looking for opportunities to help on climate change on environmental activism they want to help uh, make our planet more livable and healthy. And really, when you take on a fundraiser like this, you're giving them that opportunity. And that's the mentality that a lot of the folks who raise $10,000 go into it with or reach along the way that helps them. You're not going out to ask for money for yourself. You're asking for organizations that are doing really essential work for our planet. And if you can keep that in the back of your mind and really um, commit to it, but uh, fundraising gets a lot easier and giving people an opportunity to give gets a lot easier. Just a couple more tips. Um, so it's always a good idea. I kind of went over this earlier in my training section, but to just start early, um, the sooner you start, um, the more time you give yourself from start to finish, uh, the more opportunities you have to give people the opportunity to support you and support the organizations that you believe in. Um, uh, it's always also a good idea to just make a list of the people that you believe will support you and then start off your fundraising by giving them a call, shooting them an email, asking them personally. Um, also a great idea to get creative. Uh, you know, running, going on a 10 mile run is pretty epic. It can get a lot of support. You can really highlight it a lot. But if you do it in a dinosaur suit, a lot more people are going to be talking about it. So the more creative you get, um, the more likely you are to get some attention and also get people supporting you. And then, yeah, I just can't emphasize this enough. You're providing an opportunity for people to do something that they want to do, which is help. Um, climate change, especially if that's your issue, is daunting to a lot of people and you're creating an opportunity for them to take action on it. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to talk about social media because I think especially as I've run the independent challenge program, it's kind of where I've seen people flounder a little bit um, because you set up a Facebook fundraiser and those are awesome and you should do them, but uh, it can also feel like you've done something. Why haven't more people given? And if you're not doing those extra steps of personal outreach, updating people with what you've been up to, all that sort of stuff, then you can start to just feel a little bit like you're putting all this energy into something that's not pr proving results. Some people's Facebook fundraisers are huge. Some people's pull in $25. It's just important to remember that they're one tool, not every, not your entire package. All right. So with that, thought we'd see if uh, we have any more questions about fundraising, climate ride, um, fundraising in light of COVID-19, anything else like that. Um, so if anybody does have some questions, please let us know. I'd be I happy have, to talk about 
any of that. Question. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you're talking about social media, it's, it's a tool, but it's not the only tool. What other, what are your other recommendations for doing some virtual outreach when it comes to fundraising? So, I mean, emails are virtual, mm -hmm. but you can personalize them. Um, when you make that list of maybe the top 10 people you think will donate, it's great to start with, uh, personal emails to each one of them. You can have kind of a template, but, you know, talk about something that, uh, at least spend a paragraph, you know, talking to them individually about something that you you together. From there, you know, as you expand your scope, you can also start um, doing more like emailing 20 people at a time or something like that. And of course, if you're sending any updates, training updates, otherwise, you can just send them to a whole group. So I like emails uh, for virtual outreach in addition to the social media. Do you have something, Blake? I do. Um... So let's say you decide you're going to jump up for two hours and try to raise $500 for ACES, right? Like not one of these giant challenges, but like something more doable for you. But I mean, and so doing two hours of jumping up might be challenging. Uh, so um, one of the best strategies that I've seen for raising money, um, you know, once you sign up, you get a fundraising portal on our website, and that helps you keep track of all of your emails and like uh, also every donation that's come in and thank you letters and stuff. So there's actually a whole portal that you can use. Some people don't use it at all, but um, I think most people usually do. Uh, they put all their emails into it and then send out emails. Um, a lot of people just ask people in person or they actually write letters, like handwritten letters, which makes a difference. Um, but one of the best strategies I've seen is if you want to raise five hundred dollars, you say, "Okay, well, I should, I'm going to break it into smaller parts." So I want to get a hundred dollar donation. Who could maybe give me that, right? Um, I'm going to get three fifty dollar donations. That's one hundred fifty two fifty. So I'm halfway there. So if I get three fifty dollar donations, and who could that be? Maybe my brother, maybe my wife, maybe my um, grandmother, whoever is in your life. Um, we ask people to tell. We tell people to talk about it all the time. You know, if you're if you're um, coming in contact with people. Uh, so a really, a really good way to do that is to just break it up into those. Like I want six ten dollar donations. I need five five dollar donations. And what's so that way you can reach your goal. So, so I've heard a lot of people use that strategy and it works pretty well. So that's my two cents. Um, one other thought on just how to uh, if you are breaking up those donations, you can also incentivize them. So you know, it can be anything from I'll wear the dinosaur suit if I get all six of my ten, my six ten dollar donations in the next day, or all the way to I'll write you a postcard. Those sorts of things. Um, and you know, the dinosaur suit. If you are using social media, plays really. I don't know why I'm harping on this dinosaur suit today, but apparently I need to get a dinosaur suit. But you know, any sort of costume, um, funny hat, those sorts of things, embarrassing yourself a little bit. Um, that goes that goes a long way across all platforms <laughs> for fundraising. Do we have any other questions? Well, I do kind of like the idea of like if you even say like each fifty dollar donation gets a handwritten letter from me with a dad joke in it somewhere. You know, something. I think that that's unique. That's cool, uh, and and a good idea to get some money too. Yeah, we've had a lot of people do that. You know, someone that made someone come do that and makes jewelry. So, um, you know, she said, I'm going to, you know, you go, oh, I'm going to make um, little bike earrings, you know, for every $100 donation I get, that kind of stuff. We definitely have a lot of people. It's kind of like they say, lead with your strengths. Uh, so, you know, whatever is important to you, however you make it happen. I mean, if it has to do with renewable energy, I mean, since ACEs, you might um, get, you know, some sticker or something to send to everybody, or um, there might be some way to, to, to do that. Something solar powered, you know, a toy that's solar powered. Something, something very small, doesn't have to be expensive or plastic from uh, China or something, right? Uh, it can be just about anything maybe that you can maybe send something you recycle, uh, something like that. So something meaningful basically is what we're looking for. So. Very cool. Well, yeah, I think we're going to have to raise some money to get Mackenzie a dinosaur suit here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to be great. That's my next fundraiser. We'd also probably say, you know, check out our website. It's climberide.org. And, uh, you know, um, some of our events are on hold or paused at the moment or have been rescheduled. Um, we're also putting the final touches on our 2021 schedule of events. And on any of those events, you can choose ACES as uh, 
as your beneficiary. So every almost all of them, but a couple of ones that are only for certain places like Glacier Ride is only benefits the Glacier National Park and Service Sea, that kind of stuff. Um, but for most of our events, you can choose any of our 125 beneficiaries. And of course we recommend that you, you know, choose ACEs uh, just because it's such great work. So. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, yeah, do you guys have any other comments before we uh, sign off here? I think that does it. Um, we'd love to have anybody sign up, do an independent challenge for ACEs. Um, you know, we've walked you through it today, but there's also plenty more to talk about. So if you are thinking about taking on a big fundraiser and you want some additional help, um, feel free to sign up at climateright.org slash independent. And yeah, thanks for this opportunity to chat. And, I'm sure if you're here, you're one of those people that does extra special things for our planet. So thank you for doing that. That's what we're in it for. I really appreciate you. So and thanks to ACES for making us more survivable. <laughs> yeah, thanks to you guys too. You guys are doing awesome work. Um, Climate Ride's awesome. I love that you're making it, you know, virtual. People can bake pies to raise money. I think that's great. Um, you know, and just one idea. I've seen people that are really getting into even like, making you know crafts at home and and selling those so that could be a cool fundraiser too so i think there's a lot of opportunity and i, I appreciate what you guys are doing thanks so we're going to um yeah it's kind of fun stuff so all right thanks very much yeah thanks blake thanks mackenzie thanks everyone that's on and um we'll talk to you guys soon and i'll be able to uh, share all this information with everyone on the call and then we'll also have a recorded version of this um, for everyone to watch again thanks, right. thanks. thank you everybody all right Bye.